How are you doing, Lorna? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. I like your backdrop. That's a nice colour, that is. Oh, what, the red? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if um, it made me look a bit pale. I've got light walls in my house, but I was like, oh, I'm looking a bit like Dracula or something. But it's quite right, cool. Yeah. I thought it was a bit yeah. unusual. Yeah. Um, I'm going to begin because I haven't got too long today, but I just, I actually only watched the, the movie this afternoon and it just made me feel really Christmassy. And I can't give a film a better compliment than when it just makes me feel really Christmassy. Um, but I wanted to ask you when you sort of first got the script, what was it that initially attracted you to this project and to this character? Um, well, I got the, um, so obviously I auditioned and that with the director, uh, um, but it was such a quick turnaround that I only got my scenes because um, on the Friday, I read with the director and then um, they were like, yeah, great, let's start on the Monday. So um, yeah, I was like, oh God, right, I better just read my scenes, make sure I know them. But it was just so lovely, even the scenes that I was in, they're just, and they are Christmassy and they're just a bit of like, light relief, as you say, you know, make you feel a bit warm inside. Yeah, yeah so do, do you think in some ways that a quick turnaround is quite good? Do you think it kind of stops you from kind of overthinking things and just, just acting on instinct, which I guess obviously with your kind of background in soap, I mean, that's, that, that kind of quick, fast pace is something you must be quite used to, I guess. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, because I am one to overthink everything. Like when I first was in the theatre, one of the things that took me a while to get my head around was the amount of time you get to chat through something and you're right, like think about, choices and why you're doing them and all this and then I was like oh gosh right okay I've, oh and then I start overthinking all of it but yeah I suppose my background in soap made me quite ready for that then it didn't matter there was only two days it's like right I'm used to this yeah. so have you seen the film back yet to sort of fill in all the gaps you hadn't read yes yeah and then I was like oh that's why he was like that <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it now yeah. um but yeah I have seen it and you're right it does just make you feel so Christmassy inside yeah. and there's some amazing shots of London in it like it makes you all nostalgic as well you're like oh, I know that place like I've been there Oh, it made me so kind of um, like moved just like remembering what like London was like when it was kind of buzzing and full of people. It's actually quite, it was quite sad seeing all those shots I thought of London being sort of thriving at Christmas time. And that's it because Oxford Street, I mean, Oxford Street's in it quite a lot and they did quite a few aerial shots of it. And you're right. You're like, oh yeah, this is pre-COVID, not one mask in sight or <laughs> people like stepping on the road to give you the widest berth to avoid you. <laughs> But um, yeah, but it was nice and hopefully we're getting there. We're getting back there. Yeah, well, people used to step into the road to have to give, avoid me anyway. So I'm quite used to all this COVID stuff. Um, I was going to ask, I interviewed Luke the other day. I've interviewed him a couple of times and he's yeah. got such a kind of positive outlook on life. I mean, the way he was speaking about kind of this year and next year, he's got a real, he's got quite a unique, quite sort of optimism about him, which I really liked. Well, cause I, and obviously all of your scenes you share are with him in this. What was he like to collaborate closely with? Cause he's, he seems like someone that just kind of is quite a generous actor, I suppose. Yeah. And he really, and you're right. There was something really like calm about him. That's quite nice, mm. which um, I think I don't really have. I can flap a little. So it's quite nice to um, have someone, as you say, as that presence, that's just quite mellow and quite positive. And, but to be fair, everyone was like that, which was so nice. Like all the crew, they were just really welcoming and warm that, you know, it, it makes your job a lot easier, especially if you're only there for a couple of days. Sometimes you can feel a bit like the new kid, but they didn't make you feel like that at all. They were just really welcoming. And of course, your character provides him with something like a little ray of kind of hope, something like you've done a kind of a nice deed in some ways. What was, I was wondering when the last time someone, a stranger, did a nice deed for you? A bit of a risky question because you could just answer with no one's ever done anything nice to me. And it could get really depressing. But, you know, I just know, does anything come to mind? <laughs> yeah. um, a stranger doing something nice for me. Oh, God. oh well, I suppose this is quite nice. But um, today in the, I went to the post office. I mean, it's quite a boring one, though. But someone let me go through first. They kept the door open for me. Little things. Little, little things, things, you know. But then it always yeah. makes me feel really awkward because yeah. I always stand let them go through. And then I'm like, oh, now we have to do the dance. And who's going to go first? You know? Yeah. But no, that was really nice of him. Bit of a boring one, but... Yeah. Well, I saw that you were talking of nice deeds. I mean, you were kind of, I saw in the, the, the papers earlier this in lockdown, you were delivering food and stuff to vulnerable neighbours. How, how important do you think it is that people like me and you and those of us who are kind of not in the vulnerable kind of camp do do nice stuff for our neighbours and people around us? Well, 
yeah, I mean, that was it. That Because I saw online, obviously, it got quite a lot of attention. I think Marcus Rashford promoting things and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, God, what an amazing cause. And then I saw him retweeting, like, small businesses who will have been affected, and big businesses that have been affected so much by this lockdown and pandemic. And I just couldn't believe that they were the ones that were doing something. Like, it shouldn't be the government. But... I couldn't believe that people who have been affected were being so nice and offering free meals. And I just thought I've got to get in on that because I just thought I want to help people who necessarily would go hungry that half term. And this year has been difficult for everyone, let alone the most vulnerable people. So I think it's really important to stick together and just a bit of human decency, as you say, like, mm. when have you done something nice for a stranger? When has a stranger done something nice for you, you know? And it can really make a difference on that person's day and life that, yeah, it's just nice to do, you know? Yeah. And of course, I mean, you mentioned a bit, or has been a, a tricky year for loads of us, but I'm just wondering if, you're, if you've managed to, to stick to your usual Christmas plans. Are you, are you, or have they been kind of altered this year? What, what are your plans and what do you usually do for Christmas? Do you go back home? Yeah, yeah, so I normally go to my mum and dad's. Um, So hopefully, I mean, who knows with the rules, but um, hopefully I think that's going to be allowed. Mm. I I don't like, I don't know really, (laughs) who knows. Mm. Um, But yeah, not so much. Although I've worked pretty much since leaving EastEnders, like quite close to Christmas and I've quite enjoyed that. I think one of the things will be the, the amount of downtime I'll get this year, which, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm sure some people would love it, but you know it's just a strange year anyway isn't it I'll definitely put my Christmas decorations up early though something yeah. to look forward to well it must be a bit nice now you can watch the kind of EastEnders Christmas Day special without without thinking god when am I going to turn up in it and just enjoy it as a fan have you in fact can you watch it did you watch EastEnders now like as a as an audience member do you kind of stay stay in tuned in and keeping up with all the storylines and stuff yeah, well, I've def- I've watched um because my nans they both watch it religiously, always have, always will, whether I was in it or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they keep me up to date, and I've watched like the big things, like I watched when um the stabbing with Keegan, and then I watched um uh, the domestic abuse storyline. Mm-hmm. I caught quite a bit of that, like you um all the happy stuff, you know, that I thought I'd tune into. Um, But, you know, the big things. And as you say, it's quite nice to be able to watch it as a fan Hmm. and just go, oh, and you get, like, really caught up in it. Then you've got to remind yourself it's not real. (laughs) But because going back to, obviously, the beginning of our chat, when you spoke about kind of, like, um, the quick kind of turnaround and sort of drawing on stuff that you would have learned in EastEnders, what sort of education did it give you in this industry? Because, I mean, it's such a, you know, working on soaps is is such an intense kind of, like, passionate way to kind of begin a career, to do it on such a a consistent kind of um, fast-paced kind of environment. I mean, I guess you must have taken so much from that experience that you're going to then, use going forward in your career yeah and I mean I hope so I hope I like I sort of took my time there just as a sponge you know like Mm -hmm. soak up anything that you can and from the more experienced actors especially because I started when I was 10 so then um yeah you and it's funny you find the people you admire and the actors you thought were really good and then you just kind of use like their techniques and how they approach things and there's probably really fancy names for it that you'd learn in drama school but you just got to kind of go with the flow you know when you're not at drama school and you're working on the job but I'd, I think I'd rather be doing that because then you know how to put it into practice rather than learning it and then thinking oh gosh what do I do with it now yeah because I, I always like I used to work when I was at uni I studied journalism but I did one day a week at a kind of news agency and I learned more that one day a week than I really ever did in a kind of three-year course in some ways really yeah because it's just one of those things I think when you're out there doing it it's just better but I was going to say because obviously Himesh Patel is, is doing so well he's broken Hollywood that must does that is that quite an encouraging thing to see another actor that you would have worked alongside for years and stuff make that break and kind of get such get given great roles and, and have these kind of great opportunities in the industry because I'm sure obviously I mean you've been doing so well since he's done it yourself but are you are you looking do you, do you get inspired by other people that have left and spread their wings Oh, yeah, completely. And I mean, Himesh is a great example. Like he's done some great stuff, like same with like Michelle Keegan, people like that, like it doesn't even have to be EastEnders. But mm. you're right, it, do, it does give you hope because I think sometimes people can be a bit negative about it or negative about so when I don't think 
you know, it's not justified really. Like people enjoy it and yeah, it's not, it's nice to see people doing well. And then, you know, and then everyone forms their own careers. Like there's other people in it that think, oh, they're doing great stuff. And, you know, you just, it, everyone's journey is different and you just kind of go with it. Yeah, so my very final question before I go is obviously The Lost of Justice is a Christmas movie, but what's your favourite Christmas movie? What's the movie you always stick on every year without fail? Oh, so my favourite Christmas movie is The Nightmare Before Christmas, Yeah, which um is really double whammy because you can watch it at Halloween as well. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like that's you. my favourite. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. I like that it's a musical. I like it's a bit weird. Hmm. It's great. Cool. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for the time today, Lorna. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And best of luck with all the stuff you've got going on and with the release of this movie and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!